I want to talk a little bit about the difference between TTL and manual flash exposure and which one you're going to want to choose. Now, TTL is very nice. It's very automatic. It will work in a lot of situations, particularly if you're an event photographer, wedding photographer, something like that. But if you want precision and repeatability and things to always look exactly the same when you're doing a series of shots, then manual is going to be the way to go. So how do they differ? Well, let's talk about TTL first. So how does TTL work? Well, TTL means through the lens. That means it's the camera that's actually figuring out the exposure. What TTL is doing is waiting for enough light to hit the sensor, then the camera tells the flash to turn off. That's it. How does, T how does the camera calculate exposure for TTL? In general, it wants everything to average out to about a middle gray. Kind of like what we're seeing back here, actually a smidge a bit lighter than that. That works for a lot of scenes outdoors, but when you have a light background or a dark background, then you're going to have to compensate TTL because it wants everything to average out to gray. So let's say you have a picture, or let's say you have a black kitten on a snowfield. Well, what's going to happen? The, the shot is going to be grossly underexposed because you have all that white snow, but the camera wants everything to average out to gray. Conversely, all right, we, we're using kittens. We have a white kitten on a bed of coal. Same thing, in this case, the detail on the white kitten's gonna disappear because again, it wants everything to average out to middle gray and it's gonna take all that black coal and expose it until it gets a gray. You might have seen this in a wedding shot where you have a really dark background and the bride's dress has lost all its detail. That's what's happening there. Now, you can override that. You can know that when you're shooting out in the snow, you have to increase your exposure for your TTL by about two stops. Conversely, if it's a really dark room and you've got a bride wearing a white dress, you're going to need to turn down the TTL a stop and a half to two stops to get the correct exposures. So there's a little trial and error, there's a little experience, there's a little give and take to make that happen. When you're shooting portraits in a studio, you don't want to have that kind of variation happening. As you move your lights, as you change your light shapers, as your subject changes clothing, if you change backgrounds, if the background goes lighter or darker, depending on where your lights are pointing, that's all going to change your exposure. Not a great way to work when you're working on really good portraits. In that case, you need to shoot manual. Now in manual, the flash is just set for a certain power level. Let's say, for example, it's at 1 8th power. Well, at 1 8th power, your flash is just going to put out 1 8th of its power. It doesn't care what's there. It doesn't care anything. But if you're going to shoot in manual, you need to have something to measure what that number is. So for that, you're really going to need to get yourself a light meter. I've got two basic ones here. My little green one, which this is the Siconic 308S. Not available in green anymore, sadly. You can only get it in black. These are about $200. And I've also got a Siconic 478. This one kind of looks more like a, an iPhone display. Has some more features. Uh, but in the studio, both of these will work just fine. Now what these do is they measure the amount of light hitting the subject. It's not going through the camera. It's just measuring the amount of light hitting here. So for example, if I fire a light and I take a reading right here, the meter is going to measure how much light hits right here. It doesn't care what's here, doesn't care what color the skin is, what the clothing is, what the background's doing, doesn't care. It's just going to tell you this is how much light is hitting right here. So for example, I have my meter set at a hundredth of a second at ISO 100, and I had taken a flash reading before, and it says 6.3. And you can see that right on the dial or on the display there. It says F6.3. You put these numbers into your camera, and you're done. It's going to be perfect exposure every time. You can walk around. You can change your distance. You can change your cropping. You can change your lens. This exposure for the correct reading will always be f6.3 until you change some kind of setting. If you want to change your setting, now this is set for 100 ISO. If I want to shoot it 400 ISO, I don't even have to re-meter. I just hit up until I come to 400 ISO. And if you can read that, it says 12.7, which is f13. So a meter is like using measuring cups. It's just measuring the amount of light that's hitting in the place. The beauty of that is you can have your entire set in place, all your lights in place, do your metering. You can check for ratios. You can see that it's brighter on one side versus the other, just the way you like. And then you're done. Wait for your subject to show up. And when they get here, you can start shooting. And a lot of people don't have a lot of time to sit around for portraits. 
especially if you're doing business portraits. You go into a lawyer's office, they're gonna be looking at their watch. They want you to be quick. Well, if you have everything set up ahead of time, boom, take your reading before they get there, have them sit, get a couple of poses, take your pictures, that's it. Quick and easy. No adjusting, no guessing in TTL. Now, there are people that are very good using TTL. And it also has to do with the way you think. You might find TTL makes more sense to you than manual or vice versa. Well, through this course of videos that we're gonna show you, I'm gonna explore both ways. We will start out doing TTL. First on camera, then off camera. Then as we start to get into more lights, we get two, three, four lights, it's gonna be time to get to manual. Because remember, <clears throat> TTL is just measuring the light coming back through the camera. Well, what does that do with the lights that are just hitting the hair, the lights that are just hitting the background? It doesn't know what to do with those. It's just measuring back to the camera. So when you get to that level, it's going to be time to get into manual. A light meter is a very simple thing to use. It's not a big expense. And once you have one, it will become your best friend because there'll be no more guessing. You take your reading, you look at the number, put that in your camera, that's it, it's done. So TTL versus manual, I'll show you both ways. You just pick the one that makes the most sense to you. So let's get started and make some portraits. Okay. 